Ready, set, up your geek. Guys, welcome to Up Your Geek Spotlight. I'm here with Raul Vega, creator of Swiss and Lolly Hijack Hollywood. Um, so this is a um, podcast that follows two young L.A. slackers who take over Hollywood to become accidental con artists, right? Uh, or they, they become accidental con artists in the story and and. <laughs> also they can give up the hustle uh, so um and retire to their dream beach house in malibu um could you tell us uh, a little bit more about the show and your idea um about uh, bringing these characters to life yeah uh cool thanks Lou. thank you for having me on the show man this is uh, it's really exciting uh so swiss and lolly was uh that was basically my COVID project I did with um, my two of my best friends, Aparna Brielle and Kristen Couture, who both play Swiss and Lolly. Um, and uh, we were sitting around, man, I think it was probably early May 2020. And I was just hankering to get some create, creative stuff going on. We've been talking about working together on a project for a long time. And I knew I was like, I know we're not going to be able to meet up anytime soon. Uh, definitely not in any studio. So I just texted him with this crazy idea. I had coffee just sitting on, on my front deck at my old place. I just had these ideas of these two girls walking up Runyon Canyon and just listening to all these crazy stories of people in Los Angeles. Cause people like to be really loud in LA and be very like, you know, like, oh, yeah. I was like, what if the story that was kind of like two girls who were trying to get into this but not for the sake of anything of they want to be an actor we've seen that a thousand times i'm like what if they were just two kind of lazy people who just want money just so that they can chill at a beach house in malibu and i text him and instantly the girls were like we're in and it's funny because these are two of the most hardworking people i've ever met in my life so for us to kind of build this whole story you know out of the characters having to go into characters who are not hardworking, it's it's kind of like a story of uh you know, friends kind of trying to survive out here. Uh, Raul, could you all right, tell us a little bit about Swiss and Lolly? You, you said this was your COVID passion project. Could you um, dive a little deeper into these characters, um, who they are, and uh, you know what they uh, what they mean to each other in the show, and what their ideas are? Because it's um, I heard you say it's not that uh, that you didn't want to repeat something that's always seen again. So it's just like, they just want money. Like they just yeah. want to be able to quit. Um, uh, tell us about that. Sure. So, so we kind of, I really wanted to create two characters that could both be fun and lovable, but also like incredibly cringe and that are just, <laughs> you know, and like, how do you find that balance? You know, um, they, they aren't two people who are necessarily out here trying to do good in the world. They're not necessarily trying to harm anybody, but they're kind of doing exactly what Los Angeles teaches people to do after they've been here for several years and survive by any means, no matter how unnecessary. You know, uh, people come out here because they're trying to be an actor or a director. Or me, as I wanted to come out here, be a composer. And there's so many, you know, you, you always you're getting knocked down way more than you're being held back up. And, um, you know, they they didn't want to come out here for any of that. They just they're just kind of here. Um, and so still developing the characters, I was I'm like, OK, well, they're, they're kind of duds in a lot of ways. But the real kind of tethering of all this together is just that they are two best friends and they bring out the worst in each other in the funniest ways. And it was really important that make sure when I was writing their characters, as distinguished as they are, we didn't want to have like, oh, here's the crazy one and here's the rational one. Here's the loud one. Here's the quiet one. So for every episode that Swiss, played by Kristen Couture, every time she gets a little crazy, Aparna, who plays Lolly, is kind of more of the straight person. And then we'll reverse it in the next episode. And then the only time you see them both being kind of cuckoo together is when they're they're actually like interacting with other people in the outside world. Um, 
so yeah i mean it's it really is a story uh, more like i said about friendship about people survive two best friends that met out here who were equally kind of going down the same rabbit hole they came out here for one particular reason things didn't turn out and now they're just doing whatever they can do to survive they kind of found a comfort in each other and um you know there it's it, it kind of blurs the line between like you know fantasy and reality a lot of the times and and, and what happens the way that we kind of design the show so um yeah, a lot of relatable conversation. I mean, most of the conversations, I mean, one episode literally is about Lolly thinking that she knows who Ben Affleck is and she keeps misidentifying him for a thousand different actors. And that's like one of the whole episodes. So, you know, it's it's we had to build a plot out of these characters, which is always fun. But I knew from the beginning, I was like, I don't want any heavy drama. There doesn't need to be any hard life lessons in this. And some of my other shows, there's a lot of drama and, you know, a lot of intention. But I was like, I just think of all the stupid conversations we have with our best friends when you're just sitting around having a drink or coffee or whatever. I was like, I I think we need to put some, some like strong, like highlights on that. So that's kind of the foundation of this whole kind of friendship is the majority of the show is just them kind of bantering back and forth, like those side conversations that you have with your friends. And then the plot kind of starts happening around them. You know what I mean? Um, I, I I love the uh, idea of this story, um, and it's kind of one of those things that um, when you go to watch it, it's it's like, or, or you go to listen, um, it's like this escape to the, the, this bizarre uh, land. But uh, the, these um, lovable but kind of outlandish, like this is kind of ridiculous. Like why, <laughs> and you're like, why are you doing this? Um, and so, and it and, and it creates a great uh, uh, comedy adventure for for sure. And um, I love the uh, so you've got some um, great guest stars on this. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I uh, see uh, Patton Oswalt and uh, Harley mm-hmm. Quinn Smith, who of course is the daughter of Kevin Smith. Yeah, um, can you tell us about the experience with the guest stars. Yeah, uh, that was fun. We, um, you know, like I said, this was our passion project with our friends and we recorded everybody. Most people, you know, last year ended up picking up their own microphones and stuff because everybody's auditioning from home and all that stuff. And, you know, we, we have a pretty wide net of friends that we ask, like just our closest friends. We kind of pitched them the idea sent them you know we had all these like supplemental cartoon materials that we made so that's all on our instagram as well so it also has these comic book elements to it as well so we sent them that and we're saying hey look we we want to help people escape for 15 minutes a day because i don't know about you lou but for me last year i found myself watching way more nickelodeon cartoons than i have since i was a kid and it's like you needed to kind of escape into a different time to be like okay, the world is very terrifying and, you know, really crappy right now. I just need 20 minutes to just, you know, just to like get on my, you know, Doug or Hey Arnold or whatever. And then when we're thinking about that, I was like, what if we were able to create that for our friends as well, for everybody who's like, wants to listen to, you know, more like in the podcast realm. So we're going down our list of like, who do we think would be down? And Aparna, uh, uh, she's, uh, she plays, uh, Sarika Sarkar on AP bio. Um, she's been on it for four seasons, continue to go on. So she asked a couple of her classmates, uh, classmates, castmates who are also her classmates in the show. Um, Eddie Levy, uh, Jacob Houston, they're also in the series as well. So she asked them if they wanted to jump on board and they were like, yes, sign me up. Um, uh, we got, uh, Brooke Markham, who's also a friend of ours. Um, she decided to come on in and be the voice of a raccoon. I mean, we just, we just (laughs) wanted to kind of blend all these fun things. Um, and then with Harley Quinn Smith and Austin Zager, um, uh, once again, we've, we, we, we've all been friends for a minute and we just hit them up and it was just before actually Harley and Austin left for Texas to, um, to shoot, uh, Cruel Summer, which came out, um, several months ago. So we were just able to kind of get them in there. Um. And yeah, again, we pitched them the idea and they're like, this sounds ridiculous. We're totally in. Um, So our big thing was it it really was getting, of course, like just some of our closest friends who wanted to have fun and play with us, because that's our whole thing. Right. Like from the very beginning, we said, if there's any point we're not having fun with this, we got to we got to take a break. Um, But, uh, you know, we continue to have fun all through last year. And then finally, 
we had to take a break actually for about four or five months because things kind of went up and down and we had like this cliffhanger of a finale last fall and then myself and a partner Kristen got together we're like we got to finish this out we got to do the finale and we're like well we got to end this on a really big cliffhanger we really want to get our big big you know big hollywood celebrity name if we can to like do a voiceover cameo and aparna was like oh let me ask Patton." And we're like okay <laughs> just pat oswald one of the most brilliant comedic writers and actors and performers like yeah sure go like go like you know we we're because they've been working together for years right and um, she sent him a, like a really cool pitch and he just emailed back and was like, I'm down. Let me know. Send me a script and let's record. And so we zoomed in with him um, at some point during the summer. And um, he just, of course, was just the kindest human being in the entire world. I mean, the first thing he said to us was, thank you so much for letting me be on the show. And I was like, bro, <laughs> thank you for being on the show. Uh, so it was a trip, man. It, it, it was it was really kind of a fun way to like go out and just have all our friends come together and having him come in at the very end playing this hyper villainized version of himself, uh, which was really cool because we just, you know, this whole show is so insanely self-aware. It's really fourth wall breaking. And, um, you know, Patton's like the sweetest guy in the entire world. And so we're like, what if we made him this super egomaniacal, you know, narcissist, like the super villain version of himself. And, um, and I thought, well, what would his name be? And I said, of course, it just has to be L daddy. So he's Patton L daddy Oswald. And like, that's a big, big thing. So, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun, like working with him and just all of our friends, but it, yeah, man, at the end of the day, we just kind of went through our, our, our friends and said, yo, are you guys bored? Do you want to have some fun? And Everybody's like, yeah, we're down. So this is truly is a friend project from the ground up. And we built something fun that a lot of people have been enjoying. So it's been cool. Um, yeah, I see, I see that you guys did like you kind of ended last year, maybe at the end of uh, December. Yeah. You guys came back this uh, this October here. Yeah. Um, when you're doing the episode the length um you know because i see some of them some of them are maybe 25 minutes or so and uh then you've got the shorter times like is, is that just a part of the process of telling those particular stories on those episodes or do you divide them up uh, do you have a process in which you divide up the stories yeah that's that's actually a cool question because um you know, we originally wanted to put them, put episodes out weekly in just like 10 minute increments, um, which is how they started. They're all really, really, really short. Um, and it, it kind of just depended on our scheduling and depended on how much we had to say for the episode. I think what's really liberating about writing and for podcasts, specifically audio fiction podcasts, is you're not bound to this, to like a specification of you have to be 22 minutes in length or 40 and the act one has to end at this part two after 12, you know, after 15, 18 minutes and three there, you don't have those limitations. So the stories really like when I'm writing it, I don't really write with that in mind. I write with what do I, what do, what's the most we need to say with this episode? Where can we trim the fat? Like, let's say everything we need to with this part and not even worry about that. Now for the finale, because we made people wait so long, I have a tendency of doing that with my shows. I'll build, 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 and then something will happen. I'm like, all right, the finale's coming. You might gotta wait a year. <laughs> and then when it comes out, I'm like, I really want to give you a full kind of like movie finale. So that's what we decided to do with this. We're like, well, we want to wrap up this story, this first season. Um, and ultimately it's supposed to run kind of like one full long hour and a half episode, hour and 20 minute episode. I was like, maybe we can divvy it up and chunk it up into three parts that people can then kind of like get weekly. So it really just depends on what, what's happening in the episode. I mean, like I said, the second episode called Ben Affleck is just them driving around, driving down to the beach. And like, there's no, there's no reason that needs to be more than 12 minutes. Like there really isn't. So I was like, all right. But then the next episode where there's a lot of plot structure that's happening, that one's like 24 or 25 minutes. So I was like, all right, like, you know, it, it just, it, it depends on kind of what the purpose of each episode is serving the story, you know? Uh, so the, the finale you have this year was for big city nights. Right. And yeah. Uh, parts one, two, and three. Yeah. Um, 
so I, you know, it's a pretty uh, hilarious banter that goes on in in the uh, the podcast here. Um, so you can you can see Swiss and Alley um, or listen to it on all platforms, right? Yeah. Um, it's totally free on all platforms, uh, on the podcasting platforms. Also, you can go to the website, SwissNally.com. Uh, the podcast is right there for you to listen to, uh, for anybody, um, that is watching. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, where do you see this going? Um, yeah, yeah, actually that's, that's cool. We, um, well, we, we've already started, uh, uh, talking about how we're going to develop season two. There's a couple of exclusive bonus things we're going to be putting out next year. Um, you know, I'm a very character driven writer. So we have a lot of characters in this series. You know, even though Swiss and Lolly, they are the main characters. Every person we brought in has, you know, a very specific role that they're playing in this whole, you know, world that we've created. Um, so I've, I've got some solo pieces we're going to be putting out, um, within next year that, you know, they're, they're probably going to make little cameos in here and there, but we're going to focus on some of the other characters because a, a lot of the fans are just really, you know, they love Swiss and Lolly, of course, but they're like, man, some of these other characters, I want them to have their own show. And I'm like, all right, well, I mean, I can mess around with that. That just gives me more and more of an excuse to live in this crazy world. Right. Um, so we have that. And then, you know, we, we absolutely have talked about wanting to push it even to the next level. I mean, like I said, it kind of blurs the lines of reality um, and fantasy. So we really kind of, you know, we could absolutely see this being adapted as like a cartoon or a live action or something of both, actually. You know what I mean? Like oh. we, we, that that was part of the reason yeah. why we have all these little cartoons we make. We're like, we want to have the podcast, but we also want to give you something visual that you can bite down on and kind of see how quirky these two are. And then by the time you finish the finale, it almost feels like a cartoon, you know? So, so it's, it's kind of in its own little realm in that, in that way. But, you know, a lot of our influences before, especially the girls are like, you know, they did on like space jam and Lizzie McGuire, where it's like, you know, real live action. And then these little cartoon characters pop up like, that'd be kind of funny if we kind of built it that. So we, we have a lot of ideas, but we're, we're definitely going to continue on with the season two. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just kind of the very, very beginning stages of that. But we definitely are looking into trying to find a way to make this into something, you know, um, in a visual component so that you're no longer just using your imagination to see the world. Hopefully we can, like, realize that for you and bring it to life. I like that idea. Um, and that was actually, I mean, you, I, I was, I was actually what I was going to ask you next, too, is that they, um, it seems like this can be, uh, it's got a lot of potential to transition uh, or to evolve into that. And it seems like it's the, the, the idea and the concept and everything seems like a series that I would see watch on Hulu or oh, uh, be cool. or like Amazon. Like there's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of these shows now that are these animated comedies that are coming out on those platforms and they're just dropping it. At, and so I'm like, this is, I said, this sounds like they could be one of those now it's in podcast form, but definitely sounds like it to be an animated uh, uh, comedy series. Um, and, and that, you know, and I'm telling you, I'm here for it. Uh, yeah, so. I support that. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, would, I would love to see that. Um, yeah, you know, me too. <laughs> I always, I listen, I listen driving and everything like that. And I, um, yeah. and it's pretty easy to listen to, especially uh, with the short run time too. Okay. Um, you can get through a bunch of things just going from A to B uh, in yeah. your car too. And so, but it's pretty impactful where the idea lives the idea is there like it could it could definitely evolve into that uh i'm, I'm putting those positive vibes out there i appreciate <laughs> that man I, I hope i hope amazon's listening i'm sure they're always listening Listen. so prime you heard it here first I'm always always geek. <laughs> I'll, I'll get an email soon i'm sure yeah um, exactly <laughs> no, no. heard you like cartoons yeah exactly no. But they, uh, I, I I love that. Um, uh, I love the the passion behind the idea, and, and it's you know to to have the the silliness and 
the, the ridiculousness of like these girls just wanting to <laughs> like to accidentally become scammers and then yeah. <laughs> they, just, they just want to make money. That just, is, man. Yeah. yeah. It sounds I mean it's it's got all the makings of that. And that's what it kinda of, that's it's like man, like if, if someone like pitched this to me and I and I heard it, I thought well, oh, was this a new like you know uh, animated comedy coming out because yeah. this that is actually a great idea for that. Yeah, no, man, it was, and you know, and the, the the funny but also scary thing is like when you've lived in places like L.A. or New York or play, like big city, like you come across these people every single day. You yeah. just don't really know it, and sometimes you do know it, and you just kind of got to like laugh through it. So. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's just we're just like they don't work hard for anything and they end up getting everything they want, you know, at one point or another. And it's it's infuriating for a lot of people who are out here like busting their chops, trying to make a name for themselves. And these two just kind of plop in and like, well, they think we're this person. So let's be that person, you know, and like so. So it is fun to kind of build that up, especially just so that you can kind of like knock them on their butts like at the end of the day and like. You know, but uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of it is like, let's just kind of poke fun at this whole system that, you know, is so like deeply flawed. And when it comes to entertainment stuff, people are trying to like go this way or that way. I think I got to be an influencer. I got to do this. I got to be that. And you got these two, these two like invalids that just pop up and they're like, they're just kind of there and then they get everything they want. And you're kind of like, what? Why? You did nothing. They're like, that's the point. Like, yeah. I tell you what, I just, I, you know, I just, I just I did an interview for a series on Amazon and it's, sim- it's, you know, based in LA and it's, you know, got the same undertones, like everyone, I was like, so something's going on in LA that Dude, I'm telling you, man, like, <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's the same kinds of these, you know, kids who want to be influencers and mm-hmm. everything like the, the next hot item comes out. And then in 20 minutes, it's like something new. That's it. Um, and, <laughs> and, and these kids, everything, they, they, every, they, everything there is there is they're, they're thriving off of getting a num- certain number of followers and right. trying to be influencers. And I see, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, I say like LA is is like where the, the people again, like you were saying earlier, like everyone goes there for everything yeah. um, to uh, to try and you know make something out of, out of their selves or their or their careers, and and a lot of times it works. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd say it's the other way. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it works. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, you, but, you have to kind of play play the game, and the game yeah, keeps yeah. changing its rules. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. 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 You know. So it is the truth. It's uh, it's something that. Um, uh, so it, it, I mean, I know it's something that happens that people go, and I mean, you still have people who are still struggling trying to become actors, and they're still doing, uh, you know, uh, service service work and. Um, I see it all the time, um, you know, so I'm always happy when someone kind of does get a shot or does make it and, and you kind of can watch their career kind of flourish. And then speaking of which, your work, you've done some pretty great work with uh, some of these films with the music. You're a composer, uh, mm-hmm. but you also you do, uh, are you, now do you do the digital instruments? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. So I, I know what those are. Yeah. Um, can you explain to the people what they are? Yeah. Um, yeah. So for the last nine or 10, almost 10 years, actually, uh, I've been working at a studio called Remote Control Productions, um, led by uh, a little known composer named Hans Zimmer. Um, been working with him for a while, uh, but I'm a digital instrument builder for him. Uh, so that's my day job. That's how I got into audio and sound because I came down here wanting to be a composer and and um, interned at the studio at the end of Dark Knight Rises. That ended, and then I was like, well, what do I do now? Do I apply to like Guitar Center or whatever? Sam, like I had this great opportunity, but and they had an opening in their in their sampling department, and they're like, hey you did okay making coffee. We're going to try you out with this making instruments thing. And I'm like, okay. So I <laughs> came on board and uh, almost 10 years later, they still haven't found me out. So, uh, but my job is I basically uh, uh, make digitized versions of live uh, instruments. So we'll record 
uh, musicians playing pianos or violins or guitars, every single note, every volume, every which way you can think of playing the instrument. But more importantly, ways that you shouldn't play the instruments that make really cool sounds. And we'll record all that audio, all these musicians putting their you know heart and soul into it. And then I get to chop it up and put it into software that Hans can then play on his keyboard. So everything from Man of Steel to Blade Runner, Dunkirk, Interstellar, Lion King reboot, Dark Phoenix, to more recently this year the with uh, um, SpongeBob, Boss Baby 2, No Time to Die, and then, of course, Dune. That was our big one. Um, you can hear a lot of our, our, our sounds on it. So it's me and one of my colleagues and we work together and we've been doing it forever. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's a really cool kind of, kind of gig. It's kind of like uh, the way I try to describe it to people is if you look at Hans as a painter and his writing sequencer is his canvas, I'm the one who goes and mixes the paint for him. So he'll say, I want this very particular blue from this, you know, very specific region get me those, but also leave room for discovery, play around, see what else you can get. And so translated, it's, he'll be like, Hey, we're working on the Lone Ranger. It's all about the industrialization of America and building these train sets. So let's build a drum kit out of an actual locomotive system. And we did, we recorded rails, rail ties, box cars, like everything. And we built a drum kit out of it that Jason Bonham legendary uh drummer son of legendary drummer from led zeppelin john bonham came in and he we built this you know digital instrument for him and he was playing it on his electronic drum kit and he was literally triggering the sounds of the train station um so it's it's really interesting makes you think differently about sound but that's that's how this whole thing started because i've been working for him and i was like well what else can i do to push audio out here and i was like i really love movies and i love stories and i love podcasts let's find a way to combine them together so I, I think that I got to tell you, I think that that the, what you do, that job is re- like really cool. Um, I always love the, the idea of doing instrumental music and, and I uh, never got the opportunity to do that. So I always admire people that that can do that. Um, that's a pretty impressive thing to do, especially in this day and age, because I know what this this job is, but I, you know, I try to explain to people, it's like, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do with a piano, but, Mm -hmm. um, but one thing you can't do with the piano is continuously shape the note um, Mm -hmm. after you've played it. And that's what was like, so with, with digital instruments, you, you know, you get to, um, you know, with the piano, you press a key, the hammer hits the string and that's it. That's it. It's dead after that. Um, Yeah. So, you can, you know, with digital instruments, you can you can alter the notes by bending the pitch, mm-hmm. like like, and and I I love that, like so, d- just the idea of being able to play a drum and it's and it's pounding out the sounds of the train is like yes, yeah. that's awesome, yeah. um, and I can like see in someone like Hans Zimmer who was already masterful at these classical uh, instruments and and. Mm-hmm having someone like you who can mix those things for them and, and, and create these new sounds from those yeah. same instruments. It's, it's incredible. Um, and I, I mean, I'm sure you have fun doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, God, I mean, I always go back to Lone Ranger cause we literally got to just have a, like a demolition kit in our old room where we just, he said, go to Home Depot, get a bunch of like clay bricks and, and chains and, you know two by fours and we had this piano lid somehow that was like in our alleyway so we brought that in we just took hammers and axes to it and you know just you know broke it and and what's interesting is you know it's it sometimes those instruments those sounds just sit on the shelf and then they'll get repurposed years later because we end up our goal is to just mine as many different cool sounds as possible sometimes they work sometimes they don't so it's really like a science lab it's all just experimenting you know um and like, and it's exactly like you said, like if if you're just playing the piano the same way over and over and over and over and over again, you're not really saying anything new with it. What can you do to push it and push the boundary and and make it feel and live in a way that maybe it's not meant to? You know, that's Hans is all about taking risks and just really trying to like you know distort the common way of doing things, not for the sake of novelty, but because there's he he just knows there's so much more to say 
with one instrument or two instruments or whatever. Um, and ov obviously, of course, with our instrumentals we work with, I mean, that they're so paramount to these instruments that we're building because it's, you know, we can get a lot of people and, and it's really about putting their soul and their essence into whatever the instrument is they're singing or playing or whatever, you know, so it's it really is just such a collaborative place. Um, and he's always like he thrives on just tossing around the idea and just being like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you guys think? And, you know, we'll give our opinion. We still always end up doing it. But he's like, yeah, figure something out. Like, give me this, but also play like have fun. You know, let's discover this together. And that's I think that that just makes it so much more enjoyable for everybody, because then it really is something that we've all created together for the better purpose of the movie and the project. Like, that's what we're serving is for the storytelling through sound, you know. Such a mark of uh, of a great composer like that that can evolve with. I mean, Hans Zimmer has been around for a long time. Yeah, and, and to be able to evolve and stay, you know, not just be hey, remember what this person did? Like always creating memories, mm -hmm. always creating new things that people can latch on to. Right. And and it and grows this library of excellence of I mean it, I mean and one of the you know one, he's one of the large large composers who like you know they sell they sell albums just of his music from mm -hmm. scores from films. Yeah. And they sell like crazy. Um and it's it's insane because these the, listening to those new tools, listening to new ways to 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 dish out a sound from a piano key um, or something that goes to a drum or violin or mm -hmm. anything, it's it's really cool to know that you can kind of take those classical notes and just yeah. kind of stretch them and make new sounds. And I think that that world being able to do that is great. I imagine you get to. Um, supply your own uh, apply your own skills to these shows because you know it's kind of like having the best of both worlds there uh, being a creative behind it but also being able to uh, do the work to make sure that you get things the way you want them out and you know with, with sound and everything into yeah. these into these shows because yeah yeah i mean it's a massive part i mean i i do uh, everything on my shows i mean i write the story i come up with the concept i i do the sound design i mix it i direct i edit i master i do all of that um and mostly because you know we don't we don't have any budgets for these we're doing these for fun so i'm not about to bug my friends and you know start a regiment we have to meet these deadlines and all this stuff and they're like well i'm tired of pizza and beer man can you actually like can we <laughs> i was like i'm too old for that man uh, but it also just gets you to think a little bit differently. So I absolutely one definitely the discipline, like everything I've learned at my studio and being surrounded by such brilliant minds who are never satisfied with, uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but they're just, they're never satisfied with like just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. That's something I try to apply with all of my shows and my, and my podcasts and e even within every episode. You know, there's a pretty big jump in difference between the first episode of Swiss and Lolly to the cliffhanger that we did at the end of last year to the finale. You know, like the whole point was let's, you know, yeah, of course, I'm quick with the editing now. I know I can mix stuff pretty quickly. They know the characters even better than I do at this point. So there's really not even directing that I'm doing. It's just we kind of developed it all together in that sense. But it's like, how can I shape this and tell this in a way that I haven't done yet, maybe hasn't been heard yet. And so just kind of like approaching it with that at the back of your mind, tickling your brain, tell the story, but it, you know, it may be cliche to say, but to me, it's not the story, it's how you tell it, you know? And, and the more you can kind of immerse yourself in a world, um, you know, with just headphones, you know, and really encourage people to like use your imagination again, like yeah. All we're doing is we're giving you guide tracks. You know, I'm giving you, we're giving you sound design. We're giving you dialogue. We're giving you music. That's it. At the end of the day, you get to listen and you get to decide what these characters look like, what this environment looks like, you know, what it feels like. Um, and so that's kind of, that's, that's where it lands. And that's, it's, it's meant to be kind of an interactive piece in that way. You know, it's not really, 
something to just, you know, we want people to just throw on when they're doing a thousand other things. Like there's a story here, like hopefully it's an interesting enough for you to want to be like, wait, I need to sit down and really like just kind of live in this and see kind of what's happening. But I mean, a hundred percent, I learned all of just kind of pushing the ideas of what story is through Hans, yeah. because of course he's a brilliant composer and producer, but he'll tell you to, to your face. I mean, he's a storyteller at the end of the day, everything is story to him. And, and that comes down to the sounds that he uses and the musicians that he's using. You know, I kind of look at like, I'm, you know, if music is his language, like I'm helping to carve out some of the alphabet letters that he's using to kind of write his masterpiece. And that's, that's really cool. It's really, really cool to, to have a boss and a mentor like that, you know, who just wants to play all the time and say, we haven't done this before. Let's do something different. And still, you're just like, how do you come up with these things? <laughs> and so, and they always, you know, they, they usually, they always end up working. So maybe not in the way you think they will, but just the fact that it's so encouraged to mess around with things and play, you know, that's, that's the heart of it. And that's the heart of all my shows and definitely with Swoops and Lolly. Let's just play and have fun. I think the, the work that you're doing is, is kind of inspirational too, for um, a lot of people being able to put yourself into a project um, and especially like being in the pan pandemic and, and going through this idea of uh, this is what I'd like to do. And um, I've seen a lot of projects um, that have come out of the pandemic. There's a lot of TV shows that have come out of the pandemic, um, you know, and I've talked to some people and, and, and it's like this, this thing like became this creative um, this creative, like people took it and like, you know what, we're going to be stuck at home. We're going to be mm -hmm. shut down and, um, so let's let the ideas start flowing because, you know, you were, you know, people are so busy. They got a lot going on, but when things kind of slowed down, you had time to think and come up with new ideas and new processes. And, yeah. and I think that we're better for it. Absolutely. I agree with you. I mean, we've got these great shows and podcasts and, um, and, and, and people have more content to consume. Um, so I think that's great. Um, this, uh, this show is uh, one of those things that I think that will, uh, it definitely has a, a lot of potential for evolution. I'm hoping it does. Uh, <laughs> Um, again, putting those vibes out there. Please appreciate <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're here with Raul Vega, the creator of Swiss and Lolly Hijack Hollywood. It's on all uh, podcasting platforms available right now. And you can also go to SwissandLolly.com and check out the podcast there on the website. So go and do that. It's available right now. Might want to start with episode one, though, and go through and listen to the entire show. They got some great guest stars. Um, you're gonna love it. Um, Raul, can you tell the people where they can find you uh, if you're on social media? Yeah, please. Uh, you can find me, I'm most active on Instagram and my handle is Rowdy Vega, R-O-W-D-Y-V-E-G-A. And also on Twitter at Rowdy Vega. So those are the two platforms I use the most. That's where you can find me. Yo, you guys made it. Awesome, man. Welcome to the premiere of my new podcast, Swiss and Lolly Hijack Hollywood. You guys ready to meet the duo? Swiss, Lolly. You cool. Yes, what is it, Mr. Vega? We're quite busy getting ready. <laughs> Damn, you guys look good. It is a premiere after all. Where's our limo? Yes, will there be a red carpet? Who's taking our photos? How long will it take to get there? Oh no, we're not going anywhere. The episode's already out. This is just an announcement video for all of our listeners. Yes, yes, jolly good. Oh, spot, where's a podcast event being held? Don't tell me we gossied up for nothing. Ladies, it's a podcast. We aren't going anywhere. We went over this, remember? You just, you listened to it. But I thought this was a cartoon. Hey, Chaz. yo de ho ladies. Well, yes and no. The podcast is like the main story and the cartoon is like a companion series. You get it? Am I in the cartoon? <laughs> yes. Hey, what about us? It's our names in the title. You can't leave us out. What? Yes, of course you are. Look, don't worry about that right now. You can find all that information on our social media. Can we please just listen to the pilot? A pilot? Hooey! Are we flying to the premiere on one of them private jets? <sighs> don't hold your breath. I heard he didn't even get us a red carpet. For shame. Holy shit. For the last time, we are not going anywhere. It's a podcast. <laughs> hey. Ah, oh, fuck me. Hey, Lemon. So, a private jet? 
That's cool. <laughs> Nelson! Well, don't you look like a million bucks? Ew, I am not getting on a plane with a pig. Hey! Be nice! <laughs> Pigs are chill. Totally. Swiss and Lolly is available wherever you get your podcasts. Enjoy the show. Oh, I have to pee. On va la mer, on va les boutons, mais faire rêver. Je vois, j'espère, nos maisons de rêve en soleil. On va la mer. Hey there, freaks and geeks. If you like this content and would like to view more like it, please visit us on all of our social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also visit us on our YouTube page, forward slash UpYourGeek, and you can visit UpYourGeek.com where you can experience a new standard in geek pop culture and entertainment media, because no matter what fandom you're passionate about, we have it waiting here for you. Ready, set, up your geek.